It's the world's greatest Tuesday because we've got a fresh episode of Oilers Nation Radio set and ready for your eardrums. Lying, we're just starting. See what I did there, Tyler? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Why are you confused looking? Well, I was eating my apple. <laughs> Smart <laughs> thing to eat during a recording. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, you can hear it. Sounds that. good. Mm. Little lip Here, smack. People get to watch this. We're on camera now as well. Someone <laughs> randomly came in and added a bunch of props <laughs> to our set. Wow. Live, laugh, la bamba behind you. Just a blank whiteboard. Well, that's just in case Coach Bagmilk wants to step in, you know? Mm. The drops and plus. I didn't even so That's what the Oilers have been putting or drawing up before all their penalty kills as of late. Oh. Hello. Hello. There's no marker, though. That's okay. My and you're old enough to be, you're the chalkboard guy. This is. That was a whiteboard guy. Damn kids needed a whiteboard. That was a whiteboard a chalk player. <laughs> A little bit of that chalk dust was good for you before the yeah. game. Oh, yeah, in school? Is. Yeah, those well, got, those went away early for me. Well, you know, even in minor hockey arenas, we saw chalkboards on the on the walls. You did? You went yeah. to, You didn't have chalkboards in school? No, we had whiteboards. Smart boards for me. Yeah, you're Come from that exact time Liam? in line. What very else? privileged. How old do you <laughs> think we all are, Liam? I had what? chalkboards in Hold England. Hold on a second here. Oh, what the hell is a smart board? Smart board is an interactive whiteboard. It's basically an iPad It's a big computer. iPad on the wall. Do you guys have the, uh, <laughs> what was <laughs> Sorry, I'm a chalkboard he's guy. Buffering, he's buffering. Well, he's no, because I went to grade seven. We definitely had whiteboards, but I was in a brand new school for that. Did you have the uh, the projectors? You know where you had to put that thing upside down and backwards? And I do over, remember that. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from my early days. Yeah, the overhead projectors. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's what smart boards look like. I want to buy one of those. That, that is that is what smart boards were before, Rick. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because they, they were like smart because you could write on it with a marker. You had to wipe that off. It shows up. And if you were not careful. Yeah, and then you could put, like, too long, try and make some animals on yeah. there. Yeah. You guys really didn't have chalkboards. Well, we did yeah, until yeah, no, they I were replaced by better technology. So wow. I had chalkboards all through, jun- all through elementary, but my junior high was a brand new school. Interesting. So I'm assuming that's why the technology was. I had but you also come from a country of cobblestone roads and mm-hmm. such, you know? True. Yeah, no, you, I, Great I Britain, actually went Great on... Great Britain's known for their chalkboards. I got to school on horseback most yeah. days. Mm-hmm. Mm. First thing you said when you came to Canada, what is with all this smooth this smooth concrete? Yeah, what are these horse what and are these things everywhere? driving around? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, really? What an intriguing... And every city and town in England sounds like it's from Middle Earth. Mm-hmm. You know? Or Shire. Or Shire. Hampshire. Mm-hmm. North Hampshire. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Mm-hmm. Worcestershire, is that how you say it? <laughs> Worcestershire, yeah. Not Worcestershire Shire. Is that how you actually say it? Worcestershire? Worcestershire. All right. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Wor- no, no, Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcest- no, 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 no. <laughs> One more time. the AHL team from Worcester? Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. 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 I can't even say it myself now. Ah. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Thanks for tuning into our Oilers podcast, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's a delicious. We're debate teaching you how to make a Caesar. <laughs> First ingredient: Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire yeah. sauce. Eight that's to ten. What eight I'm to saying. ten drops. No, it's not. You're saying that like you got a mouthful of rocks. It sounds like Worcestershire oh. sauce. <laughs> it's like it sounds like you're repronouncing the the word in the middle of the word. Worcestershire. Like you're, sauce. You're, you're, you go to say the wrong thing. You say Worcester, and then you're sure. sure. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. No, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. You know what? The sauce. next time you stumble something, I'm going to say, Liam, you sound like you have rocks in your mouth. And we'll see how well, you I feel. D- I do. Why <laughs> would you ever want rocks in your mouth when you could put a cinnamon pull apart from Wendy's in your mouth? There we go. Back I on know. the road. Thank you. <laughs> this There's is no reason up. you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Face Off <laughs> Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. Spent 20 minutes on that. I love when a plan works out, Rick. High five. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, little do people know, we actually prep all of this. <laughs> Dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com is where you want to go. Get your teams in. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon, Cinnabon pull apart. The small coffee is a great choice. That does sound lovely. I've got a confession to make about the Wendy's Daily Face Off Survivor poll. Go ahead. So as you guys know, I wasn't here on Friday. Here we go. You were still alive you on Friday. You were still in you and you didn't your play. In. I didn't make my pick. Wow. Uh, didn't make my pick. I made it all the way loser. and I didn't make my pick. You could have got some nuggos. I could have got some nuggos. Mm. But here I am. You telling should be you all to say what's the show. Suspe- I, I'm already out. So I essentially no, am suspended. From for no, not the game. Oh, from maintenance day. Yeah, uh, you cannot eat there for a week. Oh, no <laughs> Wendy's, Wendy's for you for one week. <laughs> well, that is a hassle because I do drive past the Wendy's every day. Mm-hmm. Dude, a, mm-hmm. I go, hello, Wendy. 
They can eat no it. No response. Yeah, you say hello, Wendy's. I just like, <laughs> if <laughs> I go into Wendy's, I will murder spicy chicken sandwiches like crazy. <laughs> well, They're so good. They haven't put them on special in a couple of years now, I'm going to tell you. Well, you know what? Because they know old bag milk's coming in and paying full price. <laughs> <laughs> Dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Go sign up. Win some prizes. Win some points. Win some Wendy's. Tyler, what's the delicious debate? Delicious debate today is about Evander Kane, who was given a maintenance day and then this morning, before the Oilers game against Winnipeg, in Winnipeg, said this when asked about it. Uh, Andrew, how are, are you feeling uh, about just getting back in after having a, a maintenance game or a maintenance day uh, a couple of games? Uh, I feel good. I feel good, yeah. <laughs> was it just a uh, build-up of things that sometimes just have one game off gives you an extra few days to rest and be ready? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> So I guess it's a two-parter. What do you make of the maintenance day, and what do you make of the, as you just heard, Kane's response? Well, it doesn't really sound like it was a maintenance day. It sounds well, more like a, a lot healthy of scratch the, day. There was, there was a lot of re- reasons for the maintenance day, you know. Um, <laughs> the dude hasn't scored in how long? We have too many you, forwards right we now. We're we in Arena. We have the circle, we have to cycle guys in and out of the lineup right now. He hasn't scored in quite some time. He's maintaining his spot in the press box. Yeah, look, and then, then I think you have to give him a little bit of credit for answering those questions that way, as opposed to, like, calling out the coach or the team and saying, hey, like, I mean, that's kind of what everyone expects out of this guy is for him to sit there and say, oh, no, I was, I mean, obviously he wasn't hurt. Um, <laughs> but he didn't call out the coach. He didn't call out the team. He didn't say anything negative. He had a couple cheeky kind of answers that I don't think surprises anybody. And the team calling it a maintenance day, if they were benching him, well, that's kind of like what you do with veterans. You like, hey, listen, you're gonna take a rest this game. Unless you're torts. We're not gonna tell you that we're not gonna say, Hey, listen, we're benching this kid. We're gonna say it's a maintenance day. We had a talk behind closed doors. Now it's over. You move on to Winnipeg and yeah, let's go. That is precisely my issue with what Kane did today though. Why? If the <coughs> team is going to do you the solid of not going through a Quote, healthy scratch and you aren't in the headlines. But he didn't say anything. We're just insinuating that. We but then you can come out and just it's, it would have been so easy for this to be a non story if came, Kane came out today and said, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to get back and contributing. Boom, done. Instead, he does his little snarky thing because he wants it to be a story and wants everyone to know the team benched him. I don't like that. I don't That's know, man. I just you're a guy like you, you have an ego to play to play professional sports. You have to have an ego. And some guys egos are a little bit bigger than others. And, and it is what it is. So let me ask you a question. Did you have a problem with the dry side Kane interaction on the bench? Because I did not. I had like the furthest thing from a problem. I didn't even, when I first saw it on the broadcast, I was kind of like, eh. And then when I saw people who were wondering about it on social media. Really it digging into it. Yeah, I was just like, that probably happens two to four times a game on most teams. I've yelled at my friends about stupider topics than anything they were talking about, and it got way more heated than that. <coughs> yes, yeah, so I don't know, like... That one didn't even look heated. We're a not really at all. soft group Super of people soft. now. If we're going to look at that and think that that's, like, the end of the world or something like that. I have worked in pretty high-stress situations where you definitely do that and then some with other people, and when it's all said and done and, and, the, and the clouds clear away, you sit down, have a beer, and uh, nothing ever... Like, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's a non-thing. I think, too, like, heat of the moment, very competitive alpha personalities. It's going to happen. Yeah, no shit. Who cares? It's I fine. think the only thing that maybe added some fuel to it was the fact that, you know, a month ago, right before the deadline, we kind of heard those reports that dry settling Kane were, I don't remember the term that was used, but, like, you know, butting heads behind the scenes maybe, or there was a rift there between the two. There was actually a hand-to-hand fight in Detroit of two guys who play on the same damn team and then the next game, they stood up for each other, and I was the first one to say, yeah, that was my hot performer, I think, something like that. That's, that's, fa- that's fantastic. That's how you bring a team together. You go through whatever during the times, and, you, and when it's over, you're, you're back to being buddies. You're back to being brothers. You're back to being family. That's the way. That's just the way it goes. Y- yeah. I, I just in the early should have said he was healthy scratched. Like, just come out and just say what it was to start. And see, even they that, I don't made think is that big of a thing. I the don't NHL, think it's a big the NHL deal. is known for upper body injuries, lower body injuries. Maybe, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. They, that's what this league is. It's it is what it is. But it's it just just felt so inevitable what was gonna happen. 
but he could have just started with just say what you're doing. You're healthy scratching him because he hasn't scored in 15 games, whatever it's been. And you want to see more from him. And then that can be it. Instead of now, it's just like clear that they didn't give him a maintenance day that he was healthy scratched. And now Kane has to go into the media. And whatever he said today was going to be a headline because it's Evander Kane. And that yep. is what it is. I just, I'm not really reading too much into it. No, I, He's probably I, pissed because he I doesn't want to get scratched. Said it either, I either. actually think that he could have said way worse considering he was probably he pissed about getting you. healthy scratched. I got, I, I mean, I... I don't really have too much of a problem. I don't like asking for personality from NHL players and then getting upset when I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good that's a good point. Dan, thoughts? I think for me, it's, again, it, and I, I feel like I'm harping on it a little bit now, but I guess it's just I want something more from Knobloch here <coughs> than, than what I got. And I think that that's where the ambiguity of the situation kind of comes into it because you guys mentioned it. Like the Oilers come out and say it's a healthy scratch collectively like through social media we didn't but Knobloch would have sat down with the Vander Kane behind closed doors and they would have had a one-on-one and they would have spoken about this and the rest of the world doesn't have to know about it but they do and they don't because you're right because you're right Rick except that the media is going to uh, go and ask Evander Kane this question question and Evander Kane is going to answer that question you know Evander Kane is an Edmonton Oiler and to me if I'm the head coach I know that the message is going to get convoluted if I'm not getting in front of it. And it just seems like, at least to my, in my perspective, Knobloch is a different head coach than what we've had in the past with Woodcroft and all the others, not giving us necessarily the same access to his thought process. But I think that Oiler fans are used to that, and that's where the questions come in. Do you care about your co- your your interactions with your players? And the media doesn't mean shit. But the... But it does, though. It right? doesn't. Yes, it does, no. because that's that's exactly where this whole this whole thing has come from, is the media. Because, because they did it. The Who? media keeps bringing it up. If you're a no, coach, no, if no, you're no. a the coach... The could have squashed this story. If you're a coach, so do you if you're a coach, if you're, if you're the coach, you're the father, you're the whatever role, you <laughs> speak to your ready. family, you speak to your player, and media doesn't matter. Like, you're like, hey, listen, this was dealt behind, th- behind that <coughs> door. You guys aren't allowed back there. I have no... Nothing says I have to tell you what happened behind that closed door. It was happened behind that door. The door opened. The situation's over. He ain't playing. Move I on. Just, I guess my thing, and this is like, it's like the Lindy Ruff conversation where Ruff comes out and says, well, you guys are asking too many questions about the power play. Well, no. Like, those guys aren't performing on the power play. You're the head coach. Start talking about the damn power play. Like, it's, it's, that's the, that's the step for me that's just missing. And and I, yeah, and I, I think as long as you keep that stuff in the dressing room and the, and whatever you want to tell the media, tell the media. Whatever you don't want to tell the media, don't tell the media. Well, then don't, then just don't get upset when, when fans Nobody go crazy did. and we run rampant with it. Nobody got upset. It. The fans are. The well, fans, the fans are, get are upset running rampant. With, we're running rampant with the story, though. <laughs> because the team isn't, and the in team shouldn't give two shits what the what the what the fans think about interfamily issues like that. But I guess I guess, and this is my last thing: is just if Knobloch came out and said his piece, then the Oilers are in front of it, and we're not we're not leaving it to Evander Kane to to discuss <laughs> it or determine I it. I would What's agree as well. It's just again, the Oilers could have just said he was healthy scratch because he hasn't scored in so many games. He needs a day to. Look at what's happening from above. And then, and then you can just move out, on. And then Kane coming out and be pissed would be like, yeah, that makes sense. He was healthy scratch. But right now, to me, it feels like... Uh-oh. <laughs> Dan dropped his phone. <laughs> having an issue over there. <laughs> to me, it feels like <laughs> the team came out and did Kane a solid by saying, we're going to call it a maintenance day, but we're sitting you down for a game. Sure. And he came out and kind of shit on that a no, little he bit. Didn't, though. That he left. He didn't say anything bad. You're, we're reading into his smile. We're reading to his smirk. He could have, and he would have uh, earlier in his career, actually done the bad thing. I think he took the high road from the Evander Kane walk of life and said, hey, listen, like, it is what it is, and just moved on. And, and see, maybe I'm jaded because earlier in the year, I didn't like when they put him on the third line against Winnipeg, and he complained about, I haven't had this much opportunity or this little opportunity, we not even when I was a rookie. This, that's the funny thing is because we see this stuff in, in like NFL all the time. Like, I don't get the fucking football. And then you get 19 passes the next game, and no one really says anything. It's... That's just who he is, and he and he didn't like being on the f- he didn't like being on the third line. And go ahead and tell the whole world you don't like being on the third line. It's not going to change anything. You're on the third line. That's where you are. What's certainly not going to help this conversation is some quotes I'm about to read to you from the Thirty Two Thoughts podcast. Merrick and Friedman were opining about the Kane situation, and I quote from Elliot Friedman: 
Well, look, there was a lot of conspiracy theories floating around the Oilers on Sunday night when Kane didn't play. There was a scene of him on the bench with Dreisaitl. I have to say, everyone's opinion is different. To me, it didn't look that bad. I have worse arguments with Kevin Bieksa on Saturday nights. That did not look that bad to me, but I freely admit people may not have liked it. What I didn't like on Saturday, mind you, was Dreisaitl and McDavid really got pushed around. And one of the things Toronto has talked about this year is we can't be like that. If you push around our best players, we got to come at you with the puck men, uh, with the pack mentality. Like the two Florida teams are very much like that. The Panthers are definitely like that. And the lightning are like that. If someone brushes their goalie. If Stamkos and Hedman are the closest guys, they're going after the people and everyone gets into the pile. It's like five of them coming at everyone. And there's a lot of teams in the league that are like that ment- uh, that have that mentality. If I was the organization, I would not like how McDavid and Drysaddle were treated in Toronto. There's nothing wrong with what the Maple Leafs did to them. They should try to rough those guys up, but it's on yourselves to protect them. So when Chris Knobloch came out before the Ottawa game on Sunday night and said Kane was out for a maintenance day, you could see in some of the tweets, it's like they're calling it maintenance. They're just calling it maintenance. You could tell the reporters who were there didn't believe it one lick. They cast doubt over it, and I had to say, I wondered about it too. If this is a healthy scratch here and they're keeping quiet, seeing all the craziness that came out of the Sean Couture situation, it just might be. I, I wonder out loud. On a, sorry, <laughs> Liam. Sorry, sorry Liam. That, that little gap there, right? <laughs> Big breath. <sighs> Friedman continues. I wondered if the others were just saying, you know what? We want to do something here, but we don't want to pour gasoline on the fire. Now, I think if this is an injury for Kane, too, potentially that maybe he could play through. But on back-to-back, they just said, you know what? Let's just rest him up, and we'll go from there. There we go. Lehman, back to you. And I mean, that's an angle I, I, I hadn't heard that call before, and that's a, a good way of pointing it, of, like, Kane not doing that. But in that game is one thing I saw, was Joel Edmondson absolutely buried Connor McDavid in the first period on that power play. Like, he just went at him aggressively and put him right down in the corner, right? Evan Bouchard just allowed Austin Matthews to go and get that puck and do whatever he wanted with it. Well, I think he tried, to, he tried to jump the side of him and do something. Yeah. His play, well, he made a play. It was a bad play. It was the wrong play. Sure. Hit Matthews if you're going to do it. I know that's not his game, but they just did it to McDavid. So I think it's interesting that Evander Kane, and I get it, completely different roles. is like the scapegoat of that when it was such an obvious play from Bouchard, which he's now done in back-to-back Saturdays against yep. star players. And... There's nothing done about it. I don't think but he should have been. Hit. But he needs to hit. But he's going for the puck. But he's shit at doing that. But then, he, like, he did if he's not going to hit him, then he should be riding for at least a shift or two. Or something. That. And I that's because that thing like I've that one liked. on Toronto was arguably the worst defensive effort I've seen in quite but some time. But it, it looks bad because of the what he deti- the, the play he tried to make. He tried to like avoid the contact, sneak the puck on the backside. There's Did that's the work. first problem. The second Did problem is just work. staring at the play as they're going to the net. And the thing that worries well, me mean, about at that it point, too, do you do you hook him? Do you do, you do hook something? Do you it's give no him the power play? Or do you like do something? I, but I, but do you give him the power play or do you just go? Hey, listen, the chance that this guy can score from this angle, like where's you're you got to be playing the the, the, the numbers something. at one point. But stick. And Poke. take a penalty. Grab sure. him by the jersey. And so take a penalty. Sure. sure. As opposed to allowing this. Allowing play. him to the the best scorer in the league right now to walk right to the front of that. Yeah, I do that. See, and I think you gotta you gotta kinda like weigh your weigh your what, what's worse here. And I, I understand Getting what you're scored saying on there. is way worse. <laughs> no, because we do this when it comes to a fucking breakaway all the time. Like when you're on a breakaway or the, the, the guy's got a, a clear it, do you try and stop him and take the hooking or the penalty shot pr- or do you go this play is good, has like a second and a half to, to fix itself, or he gets to come in from the blue line and, and do it all over again. I think the bar should be above doing literally nothing. But it's nothing. <laughs> How is it not? Because he made a choice that like, hey, listen, I'm going to go for the guys in front of me going to do their thing, so I don't have to take a damn penalty to stop this. I think we saw the play completely differently. That's fair, but I, I'm saying the same thing. Is like Sometimes when you're behind, like taking the hooking, the, ho- the holding, I know what, like, that's all we, you're supposed to be trying to stop the guy, but... The worst case scenario, you go five on three. Best case scenario, the play stops in front of you because someone takes steps up and makes a play. I understand what you're saying, Rick. And I'm not using the best words in order to do it, but... I agree. He tried to make a play. It was the wrong play. Yeah. I think the problem is he was very clearly trying to make the easy play, the tough play as a Fair. defenseman. You recognized Austin Matthews is on the ice. If that's whoever... I know that Holmberg guy had two goals, but if you're going into the corner with Holmberg and you want to try outskill him... Try out skill him. I don't give a shit. When you're going into the corner with Matthews and McKinnon, get in there. You're not going to outskill those guys. 
get in there and get the puck the dirty way and go from there. That's what I didn't like about it. And I think that's, again, I think the people who are unreasonably hard on Bouchard, not that any of you guys have been unreasonably hard on him. I think it's all fair right now. But the people who were freaking out like he needs to be healthy scratch, this is why he'll no. never be a top four guy, all that. No, no, no. I think, again, 250 games into the kid's career. He, he learned some lessons this week. And remember early in the year how often he would have those brutal defensive gaffes? It was like every game he was having mm-hmm. a great A brain mm-hmm. fart in the D zone. What's he at now? Once every, and I know Saturday. it happened twice this week. Once every Saturday. Once every Saturday. But before that. <laughs> hey, he that's went, one every seven days now. We're getting better. <laughs> but before that, he went 10 straight games yeah, without giving up a totally goal five agree. on five when he was on the ice. And nobody says anything about that. No one ever wants to bring that up when no. talking about Evan Bouchard. Only look at the little bad plays. So I think you, can look, big at, ones in this you case. can look at the 60 <laughs> games this year as he's gone from game 190 to 252 or whatever we're at. He's made some big strides. And totally. I, I choose to take the line of he's going to take these two moments. They're going to coach him. Paul Coffey will do his thing. And he will become a better defenseman for it. He's 250 games into his <coughs> NHL career. Let's not, as I like to say, throw the baby out with the bathwater here. <laughs> but I also just like pointing out a play where he Poor sucks baby. on it. I don't think is <laughs> me saying I don't like him as a player either. Because I'm a big, big Bouchard guy. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, he's made but it's just play. like I will say the same thing. Ryan Nugent Hopkins can't fucking score to save his life. That doesn't mean I don't like him. Well, he's cursed. Back the snake bite is real. He had like seven or eight shot attempts against Ottawa. Three posts in two games. Like, man. But back to Bouchard, it's just like, you can point out an error, and that doesn't mean anybody wants to get rid of him. I think that's yep. annoying. That's the most annoying thing for me is because, like, you saw that play. I saw that play against the Leafs, and part of me is like, man, I just want to tirade on Bouchard's game today. But then there's a part of me that's like, yeah, but I don't want to be labeled as a Bouchard hater because I'm not. I'm just recognizing that he's had a bad couple of games. And it's Everybody the same thing with Everybody had Kane. a bad game against Toronto. But it's just, and exact, and that's what I was just going to say. It's the same thing with Evander Kane. Like, I'm not frustrated at his whole season. I'm really fucking frustrated at these last two games, and I want to just hear something better from him. Same thing with Bouchard. I just, I didn't like his effort against Toronto. I didn't like the response against Ottawa. He's got to be better. And if he doesn't know that, then we have a real problem. But I Same thing goes with Darnell Nurse needs to be way better. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean. Especially like, I actually thought he had a really good first half of the year. He's had a little run now of a couple mm-hmm. weeks. Where I'd say like, probably mid Feb. He kind of like yeah. trailed off a little bit, but it, like Darnell Nurse definitely needs things. to be better. Just gotta simplify totally things. Totally simplify things. But then again, yeah, I always similar dance point. I always hate pointing out Darnell Nurse mistakes because I don't think as a collective we do a good enough job pointing out his good games and yeah. his mm-hmm. good stretches because you don't want to be one of those people who just sounds like you're sitting there going nine point two five and you sound like just like a mouth breather who doesn't actually. I watch think Stoffer game. said it on one of the games though, is like the best players on our team have to be better at goals against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So the best players on the team have to be the best players. Yes, but they're they're allowing too many goals against. Yeah, totally. And again, guys, they're on the ice, and that's not 100%. good. Guys are allowed to have bad games, bad stretches, whatever. It happens to everyone in the league. Alex Ovechkin had eight goals through 49 games this year. It was eight but, through five. And I think part of, like, not to weirdly bring this back to myself, but, like, Calvin Pickard <laughs> has a not great game against the Senators. And my Twitter mentions are blowing up with people going back and retweeting something I said from the game against <laughs> Dallas when I was like, hey, Pickard's playing good. I don't think we need a goalie at the deadline anymore. And people were bringing that up after the game against Ottawa when he gave up four goals. And it's like... We also got up really good opportunities. <coughs> yeah. And yeah. no one no one brings up the Pickard conversation. Those detractors never say, whoa, Pickard played good after going... Like when he four- shut out the Penguins on 40 shots or whatever it was? Yeah, dude, yeah. Went, dude went like 111... He went over 100 minutes without letting a goal in. Yeah. No one ever tweeted Very good. No one ever said, hey, good job, Ken, for finding him as your third goalie. The (laughs) the people you're referring to have never said, good job, Ken. Well, there's like... Before the trade deadline is a no-no, according to Liam. There's also a sizable segment of us where they're just pointing out for to confirm what they think. Yes. Right? And anything that goes to the opposite side of the argument just does not get... Pretty much look at all the comment sections of almost everything. You know what's fun, though, is being right. Of course. <laughs> I do like to <laughs> fucking right. <laughs> and I like to prove when I am right. Of course. Of course. I did notice there was, after Hyman scored 50, there was someone on Twitter who was like, I do think it's fair to point out the massive risk the Oilers took in the Zach Hyman deal. Well, I was like, yeah, are well, we, is it fair to point that out right well, now? Well, it's also fair to point out you can't really cheer for the guy because he had a, a privileged upbringing. Yeah, yeah. Did you know he's <laughs> the only NHL <laughs> player to come from a rich background? It is true. <laughs> you it's guys, true. Yeah. And you knew, his parents, do you know that his every parents bought those goals this year? Do you know that every privileged 
player also scores 50. Mm-hmm. I, I was just going to say, we were all five of us were one <laughs> privileged parent <laughs> away from scoring 50 goals in the NHL. Part yeah. of the reason why Mike Comrie has his number in the Raptors in Edmonton. All right. <laughs> let's not forget. Noted 50 a, goal scorer. Let's Mike Comrie. Forget, let's not forget he has a brother. <laughs> yeah, for the same bank Paul, account. Paul Comrie also is a 50 goal scorer. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so, brother. if you haven't done it and you want to piss yourself off, go watch that Andrew <laughs> Berkshire thing. <laughs> Walking in a forest. Are, are Zach Hyman's parents rich? Yes. I would and also like to congratulate. That, that effect is so much since he's been about 15 years old. I would also like to congratulate Spencer, Oliver, Cooper, and Shane Hyman for scoring 50 goals as well. Those are, of course, his siblings. Ah, uh, yes. Oh my yes, yes, yes. You know? Of course. Congratulations to all five of you. That record book is full of them. Luckiest 50 <laughs> goals in <laughs> NHL history, arguably. Oh, and those idiots, too. <laughs> Gee whiz. That, and that, too, yeah, the people. All Zach Hyman does is score from the front of the net. And all, all Mike Tyson was good at is punching. <laughs> like, yeah, just, are yeah. you supposed to score? Like, your goal doesn't count unless it's 30 feet away? Yes. Yes. You only get a half goal if it's right in the crease. Uh, but remember, yeah. if it's too far away, then it's bad goal. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> they're just walking hand in hand with the second assist doesn't mean anything, people. I remember a time when people thought that Ovechkin goal should stop counting from above the hash mark. It should. Yep. If he, if he lines Agreed. up before the shot is ready, people don't think that should count. Agreed. It shouldn't. For a limited time, our listeners can get... Money. 25. You want to know what you do with your money? You go to DoorDash and you order something. For a limited time only, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. For 25% off, up to a $10 value, zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the promo code NATION25. Don't forget, promo code NATION25 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change. Terms do apply. There's a game tonight. I recommend a little DoorDash. Maybe get yourself some Zolium. Oh, that'd be good. And then you can double dash some dessert afterward. Y- if you're getting pizza, get it from the Italian center on DoorDash. They got good pizza? That's the best. I always go there to get their uh, their cheater pizza dose when I'm making my own mm. pizza. Yeah, Ooh. those are good. Those are very good. Let mm-hmm. them rise up for a little bit. Make Come a nice on. flatbread. Come on. I don't know how to make dough, but they do. I'll pay a buck for it. I don't know how. I can figure it out. <laughs> Lehman, what's wrong? You got a look on your face that I Tyler says a little prank there that he tried to pull on us. Prank? Mm-hmm. The Gene Principe level pun. Mm. <laughs> Did you get it? I, yep. All right. Is that what you think <laughs> pranks are? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll find out later this week when I prank you, Dan. I don't <laughs> stay tuned. know if he got it. Ah, there we go. Lehman? All right, who delivered? <laughs> <laughs> Starting down at the end of the line, Nation Dan, who delivered for our friends at DoorDash? Well, if it wasn't for his rich parents, he wouldn't <laughs> get this, but Mr. Zach Hyman gets my delivery for scoring his 50th goal. It was a fun weekend side story to watch uh, and really cool to see that that video that came out afterwards of all the players yeah. just getting so excited for him. Yeah, I'll hop on that. The Oilers social team delivered too. Just cutting that up the way they did was really cool. and Having him <laughs> mic'd up was awesome. Yeah, so cool. Um 50 goals, does it from his office right in front of the net. His parents right. probably bought that microphone, though. Yeah, that's why the audio that's was me. so good. Uh, <laughs> I just, it's so cool to see him become a 50 goal guy. There was a part of me when he didn't get it in Toronto. I selfishly was like, I hope he does it on home ice because I'd like him to have the ovation, but I'm sure they'll do something on Thursday for him at the game. So, yeah, Zach Hyman's a 50 goal scorer. That is something. Well, you guys are incorrect here. The actual. Winner of this goes to his parents mm-hmm. mm, for yeah. getting the 50 goals. <coughs> yeah. Zach had very little to do with it. Love. Thank you to mom and dad, Hyman. Grandma, grandpa Hyman, too. Whoever oh, started. Yeah, yeah. 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 Whoever so really kicked off the entrepreneurial spirit. The founder in the of the Hyman bloodline. Yeah. Because yeah. who we need to thank you. Yeah. Quite a ways back. Very important. Yeah. Also, the siblings, 50 goal scores. Yeah. Huge. All huge moment for the family. That was good. Liam, you're up next for our friends at DoorDash. Who delivered for you? <laughs> um... Well, mine's going to go to Zach Hyman's parents, <laughs> <laughs> who are obviously going to pay for Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to continue their NHL dreams. Somebody's got to do it. Paying their next contract. So the Hyman family, again, for, for paying the other's way. Ding They're now actually indeed. owners of the team as well, because that's the only reason Zach Hyman's in the NHL. Of course. Sure. His parents bought the teams. <laughs> video has just sent our office into disarray. <laughs> I came in today broke. while you and Liam were sitting at, at the table, and I was like, have you guys seen this? Yeah. I walked in. Like, the first thing I walked in, and I come around the corner and goes, have you seen this video? I was like, what are we talking about? <laughs> well, I'm just glad we got here. Things could be a little more clever in our comments, because when I first saw it, 
I was like, man, I don't even think I can go in and like talk on a microphone today because the things I'm about to say are probably not going to be smiled upon by the uppers. You know. So I'm glad we got a little clever with this. Uh, everyone have a favorite Zach Hyman goal from this year that we can share? You know uh, what I love? Hyman was one in front of the net. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what I legitimately love when he stacks himself beside the post and basic effectively extends the net three feet and takes one in the chest to let it fall at his feet and <laughs> knock well, it. Well, I, I love it. What is that? I feel like he's been standing there and like trying to do the actual deflection thing, and then they just start hitting him in weird spots. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, this is not even. Wor- you know what?" Just take shoot my him at stick. Me. Take yeah. my stick. Someone hold. I'm just gonna play this little posty thing over here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna wear some harder plastic on the front here and try and deflect it in. He uh, he legitimately has some really nice goals that were outside of just the crease this year. I think of the one and it didn't count and it's a damn shame. The one against Toronto earlier in January that got disallowed for offside oh, yeah. or whatever it was. That thing was a beauty. Oh, my favorite one was his hat trick goal against Washington. Why they didn't announce it till late in the third period? <laughs> yeah, because we got to enjoy that together. Yeah, and they run through the hats on the ice and watch them. I'm going to say they're all 50 of them because this year he has. Yeah. How many of them are, are are not allowed this year? Seven. It's very low. He's like league average, I think. Doesn't oh, he have seven? I think he's still league the average. Yeah, he's just seven, I think. No, I seven mean, was last year. I think he's at three or four this year. This he's year only, he's had like. He's was it last like year or seven? Or three this year because I made a graphic. Last for year was terrible. A meme about it, and then I never used it again. Last year he would have sixty-five goals, but they got called <coughs> called back. Yeah, his parents didn't write a big enough check. No, to the league. obviously not. You know? They had to get the sell their Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite, he had a hat trick against Carolina, but do you remember one of them? He like spun out of the corner, put it through his legs oh yeah, along the boards sick. and then like cut to the front of the net, drove through traffic and then threw it far side. That one was sick. That's when I started my, my uh, uh, score Zach Hyman there. natural goal scorer debate. Actually, it was that game. Still believe that. Was that was the same game, the one where he fired home like a one knee one timer, Alex Ovechkin style from the bottom of the circle? I oh, love that Alex a guy style. can score fifty goals in the National Hockey League. <coughs> By my count, according to the research I did before after that game, leading into that, there was only ninety six players in NHL history who have scored fifty, and the people go tap in merchant. Nine? Ninety six. Do you know there's only been there has only been like if he was hit to 59, which is on pace for, there's only been like seven guys who have done that since 2000. Yeah, but he, he only scores from in front of the net, yeah. so they don't count. Hmm. One of them, Parents Jonathan Chichu, once got 56, over. which mm. is a crazy step. It's crazy. Yeah. Tyler, for our friends at DoorDash, who delivered for you? Can I just keep saying Zach Hyman, too? Like, can we just dedicate the whole segment to our guy, well, Zachary Martin Hyman? What do you know about his cousins? Uh, one of them was at the game in Ottawa, but only and one. His cousin Andy took the train. He said that after. What do you know about their parents? <laughs> Probably lots of money. Probably yeah. lots of money. Yeah, they um, actually own, own the train. The train. Yeah. yeah, it was the, it was the family train. <laughs> so they he's took. gonna score fifty next year. Probably. Wow. Mm-hmm. Probably. If he wants Huge. to. Um, yeah, I'll just take another run at the Zach Hyman thing and add this. But do you, you guys think he can do it again next year? Is this a guy like? Is this repeatable? Based on the way his pace has increased year over year, I guess he gets seventy next year. Fair. See, I think one thing that's going to be interesting for next year, and I, I think he could, but like McDavid isn't scoring, yes. Nuge isn't scoring, Drysaddle's a bit off his pace. Like but it's Nuge interesting is... to see how that kind of all balances out. I think what Hyman's able to do is something that's sustainable because of the way he scores goals. But that's not some. It's, it's going to sound wrong, but it's not an incredibly difficult skill. It's not easy to stand in front of that. Don't get me wrong, but like Painful. in comparison. It's a bit easier to score from there than it would be for like how the other guys would score. Yes, is that fair to say? Yeah, phew. (laughs) Dance that one. Take a big set of uh, cojones to stand there, though, Liam. It does. I would never. I could see him getting forty next year. I I really do think he kind of goes the way that McDavid decides to go. If McDavid decides next year is another hundred assist season, absolutely put him down for fifty. But if McDavid decides to shoot the puck again next year, which I really hope he does, start doing that this playoffs, and then I don't think so. Pretty funny, Connor McDavid only has 26 goals this year. Zach Ivan might finish the year with twice the amount of goals as Connor McDavid. If He's someone would have told you that at the start of the year, you probably would have been like, damn, how will the Oilers get through the Connor McDavid injury? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but then you go, you look at it and go, oh, well, he might become the fourth player in NHL history to get 100 assists. So weird. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Right for somebody, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, somebody did put up the image on Reddit there the other day of uh, Joe Thornton and Jonathan Chichu and said it's McDavid and Hyman 2.0. <laughs> Jonathan Chichu. I, like I don't, I don't necessarily think that Hyman will have the same fall off that Chichu did, where you ended up in the AHL. I think two for years Oklahoma. later for Oklahoma for the Oklahoma City Barons, but uh, but you could see it definitely not being the same level as uh, as it is this year. 
Boy, yeah, Chichi was out of the league in a hurry. After that. <laughs> Six years later, he was he was in uh, Zagreb, which is Croatia. Fifty six one year. Bet you the gorgeous place to play though. To oh, be fair though, to Chichu, uh, Dwayne Rolison robbed his soul in the playoffs that, that year. That did and happen. They never have given it back to him. Good. He played in the KHL for four years, but never played in Russia. Smart. Well, well I mean, Zagreb, Minsk, and Bratislav. I, I think those teams but did end up playing in Russia. Oh, I know, but he never played. <laughs> he wasn't playing in Russia. Games. I guess you could it say he refused Min- to go to Russia. Minsk is Belarus. Oh, really? Capital, actually. The old Andy I, Pettit. You're going to argue with the games. capital guy? No, I was going to say <laughs> I can't argue with that. Bratislava. <laughs> Bratislava is uh, Slav. Slovakia, I think. Mm, yeah, the Slovan. Rick, for our friends at DoorDash, who delivered for you? You got to figure out a new angle. I know. <laughs> well, you I asked him already. You said Zach Hammond's parents. Yeah, I, th- I was down with the parents. But oh, hey, we got a little uh, one beacon go to Ekholm again for keeping his, uh, his game going. I'm going to go Zachary Martin Hyman. You delivered. The last three years you've delivered. I'm going to say you've delivered so much for me over the last three years that I don't even know what to say about you. There is, like Tyler, I have a tweet from before he signed with the Oilers that's getting retweeted by Leafs fans. I went, his career high is 21 goals. Do we need a seven-year contract? The The answer is yes. The answer is yes. (laughs) The answer is yes. So, Zach Hyman, you delivered on making an old tweet from mine that isn't even that bad. He really disliked Toronto, didn't he? Yep. Also, hmm. what year did we get him? Toronto <coughs> delivered by letting him go for Michael Bunting, who then left left as well. <laughs> Tyler, can you run this through me quickly? What year did we get? Run something through him. Hyman. 2021 was his first season. 2021 was his first so season. So 2020. How do I find out who the other free agents were from that year? Ooh, I, I, uh, yeah. Okay. That'd be interesting to look at, see what everyone else got in comparison. There's a lot of debate right now if he's the best free agent sign-in of the cap era. For the Oilers, yes. For the Oilers, yes. I don't With, think without he a doubt. is. I think one thing that sways him You're in comparison. You're a big Andrew Ladd guy? Yeah, I loved Andrew Ladd. <laughs> it's not about the name. It's the it's money. About the, it's which about is good. The, 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 the numbers he's putting up at the beginning to where it is now. Yes. And I don't think anyone's taking that kind of a jump. And I think part of it, too, is because a lot of people said Panarin. A lot of people said Pronger. Huge Niedermeyer. Huge names, huge names, huge Chara. Chara. They didn't take the Hosa. step. They didn't take the Hosa. step. That yeah, Hyman that's has. the difference. And also, all those guys got paid. Top dollar. Yeah. Which is another part of my problem with people being like tap in merchant, whatever. Like if the Oilers were paying Zach Hyman, and I did this rant the other day on Owen every day, but if the Oilers were paying Zach Hyman $9.5 million because he was mm-hmm. a 50 goal guy before and they wanted him to be a 50 goal guy here, and wh- then I would understand being like, he doesn't exactly drive play like you'd want a $9.5 million guy to do and all of that. The Oilers pay him $5.5 million a year. For him to be, if he was a perennial 30 goal guy, mm-hmm. it would be an unreal contract. For him to now be in the 40, 50 goal range, like it, it is, in my opinion, the best, co- the best signing of the cap era, just because it's coming in at such a low cap it and giving you so much surplus value. Well, and I mean, the Edmonton Oilers had so many 50 goal scorers before Hyman that were just playing on McDavid's wing and just potting goals like that previously. So Last number yeah. 18 to score 50 with the Oilers. Craig Simpson. Lehman? Craig Simpson. Great hairline on him, too. What do we got over here? Sell some carpet. I'm good. Mm-hmm. End of the roll. Dan, it's time to get your Great game prepped while the boys are looking up their stats here. Oh, yeah, we have the game today. I want to tell you I about the sick. game day viewing party at Greta on April 6th. Tickets available now at nationgear.ca. You're going to want to go there. We're going to be raising some money in support of the Logan Hunter Memorial Fund. So we're going to be watch, having a viewing party for a great cause. Come down and join us. This event is going to sell out nationgear.ca. That's where you get your tickets. Turning that over to Dan, Nation Dan. Uh, yeah, I didn't give you guys any prep today, so this is all going to be off the cuff. Uh, we are playing the Winnipeg Jets tonight, so I thought it was only fitting that we should go ahead and draft Bus three depots. airports uh, <laughs> that we would that we've been to that we would like to draft. Not bit, <laughs> been been to as well as an airline carrier. Been to <laughs> defunct or uh, yeah, been to yes. definitely not oh, picking shoot. United. <laughs> or it can be it can be. <laughs> flying right now, an airline carrier that can be flying right now, or a defunct airline All right, carrier. Sure, let's go through. So, so drafting three airports. <laughs> Finishgear.ca. We're drafting airports. Certainly won't be Winnipeg's. 
drafting first. Yeah. Uh, I did the order while we were sitting here. Tyler oh, and then Liam, sh- Rick, God. Bag Milk, and myself. Is Tyler's been nowhere, so he's just going to pick Edmonton three times. <laughs> <laughs> and Calgary. Also, I do know there are going to be some like airport snobs who get at us about this. They're like, actually, when you look at the flow of the airport, it's actually not that good. <laughs> That's why it's better. Tyler. But you got to think about it. Like, ease of use. Yep. The, uh, you know, what's inside the airport. Yep. Exactly. If you've had a layover and you want to chill, like that part of it, uh-huh. you know? Yep. Um, so Tyler. I will say first overall, Edmonton International wow. Airport. <laughs> uh, that I love that Chili's. <laughs> the chili, the Chili's is so elite, you can't ignore it. And there's no place like home. <laughs> Perfect. Didn't even Liam, talk about the Oilers. Second. Heathrow. Heathrow Airport. Heathrow's Off great. Board. What is the there's reason for it? There's basically a mall in the airport and you'll never get bored. Perfect. Sounds terrible. Rick. <laughs> Vegas. Drafting Vegas off the board. Your reason? It's Vegas. Okay, it's perfect. Good. It's Beg milk. Valid. Can't be that logic. Go ahead, beg milk. I'm going to go to Narita Airport in Tokyo. It is an oh. eight-level airport. It has got a mall in there, and it is the home to the <coughs> best sushi I've ever eaten in my life. Narita Airport in Tokyo. Perfect. Thank you, beg milk. Uh, That's in Tokyo? Mm-hmm. Oh. I am going to draft Pearson Airport just because it's a hub out of well, all of Canada. Have you seen the what Tyler was saying before with the time schedule and everything? <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. I didn't think Dickie <laughs> on this one, I guess. Uh, and my uh, carrier is going to be <laughs> the Concorde. Oh, nice. Thanks. Yeah. The, the supersonic jet. Yeah, it's real it fast. Back. Speedy. Yes. Bring it back. Mm-hmm. So... Back to you, Liam. Drafting an airport or a carrier, either alive or defunct. Well, I'll just go WestJet. Okay, going to grab a WestJet. West Hometown Jets. team. Yeah. Spin. Always had good experience on WestJet. There you go. Rick. Just trying to get some extra Your points. Turn Did you skip me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bag milk. I did skip you. Sorry. I apologize. <sighs> Your airport choice or carrier, now defunct or alive. I'm going to go with, this isn't a great airport, admittedly. But it is massive, and you can get anywhere in the world from it. Mm. LAX. Yeah, that's a good one. Not a great airport experience, but you can go anywhere you want. Mm-hmm. Yep, I hear that. Perfect. <laughs> LAX. Okay, I apologize. I really did jump out of the order there. Liam just jumped in and grabbed his airline carrier. You said my name. Order. I know. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fault. I'm really excited. So LAX for bag milk. I was just figuring that all out while as we were as Bag Milk was riffing there. Uh, Rick, you're going to be drafting an airport and or carrier. Well, again, this is airports that I've been to. Not a large, uh, not a large quantity <laughs> here. So I'm going to go with Nashville's airport. Oh, nice, oh, nice. That's a good one. That's that a good one. Yeah. Nashville is How in come? the news. Uh, their aircraft carrier or their a- air traffic controller just chirped the Golden Knights there. I got that on Hockey Fight social media. If you want to check that out, Ooh, I like them even more now. Why? Mm. Because it's Nashville. Nashville's fun. There you go. So Rick is going for Thank the you. fun tour with his. And Liam, you choices. drafted WestJet. You'll remember correctly. So we're going to jump over to Tyler <laughs> with his airport or and or carrier option. Going to take Pearson <coughs> out in Toronto. I already drafted that. that. Sorry, oh, shit. you got to draft something else. Vancouver. International Vancouver Airport, airport is drafted. <laughs> mm. um, I've right. been in the Vancouver Airport more than I've been to Vancouver itself because I'm there all the time on layovers. It seems. So I'll take Vancouver. And on the way back, you get another pick, Tyler. You get to grab either your another airport <laughs> or your carrier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this segment. It's such uh, a disaster. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take my airline. I'm gonna go with Air Canada. I Air feel like people Canada. are always complaining. Everyone who has beef with an airline, I feel like it's always a split. They either hate Air Canada or hate WestJet, mm. and people are always like, "I swear I'll never fly with them again." And it's always one or the Fair other. Enough. But so you're head to head with Liam. I yeah, like I like being head to head with Liam too. Perfect. Interesting. Liam, Interesting. you're grabbing another airport. You have two airports <laughs> left to pick. <laughs> Well, we're in a, we're in a place I've been, so <laughs> I have a uh, just lie <laughs> or uh, <laughs> say. <laughs> I guess I'll go Calgary. Calgary Airport. There you go. Gross. It's always served me well. I remember one time. Gross. Stinks like eggs. <laughs> I played Terrible. on the uh, the jungle gym there. Okay. Just about a year ago. Remember when they made us a <laughs> twenty-seven-year-old <laughs> man? Remember when they made us stay in the cold young. part and we had like yeah, it was freezing. They treated us terribly. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I've only been to a few <laughs> places. I've got one other airport left. Otherwise, I'm I'm doing a d- DMP. That's fair. Can participate. <laughs> uh, Rick, <laughs> you get to pick your either your carrier or an airport. 
like his carrier, like the Airline. vessel you fly Airline. on, or the land? Oh, um, take Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna take helicopter. Oh. Cool. I was thinking about that. Helicopter? Helicopter? I've never been in a helicopter. Me neither. I, I want to go on one. I want to go sideways and see if I feel that you're going sideways. <laughs> and I want to fly with the doors open too. Mm, yeah. Fuck yeah. That'd be dope, right? I want to like also like have my legs hanging out like I'm in the military. <laughs> No, I feel you. You yeah. were fucking bad. For the people that can't see bag milk, is I'm holding a gun. He's holding a gun as yeah. he said that. An imagine he was, imaginary he was trying to rifle. Describe what he wanted to do. And that one song plays. Um, yeah, yeah. I What's know what you're talking about. Gun? No, not Top Gun. Or that Some people one. say. It. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> What's that oh, called? Oh, Fortunate Son. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's drafting so, uh, now? Draft I'm gonna go with Sunwing because that means I'm on vacation. Ooh, nice Sunwing. That's a really good pick. Thank you. I like that one. An airport or a carrier. Uh, I'm going to get my carrier out of the way. I'm going to go Singapore Airlines because on international flights, you drink for free. Wow. Singapore Airways. Drafted. Uh, I am going to grab my last two airports off the board. I'm going to grab the Munich airport because uh, I arrived there, and the first thing I saw when I got off the plane was an AK-47, and it just made me feel safer. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, my final airport <laughs> choice is going to be... Um, <laughs> That's the, the first thing I think of when I see an AK. It's like, boy, oh boy, I feel <laughs> safe, safe right now. <laughs> the same <laughs> same thing whenever I travel in open carry states. I'm like, boy, at least I know nothing bad's going to happen. Dan I'm did not ha- specify who is holding this AK, <laughs> yeah, by the way. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to go with the, the San Francisco airport because I spent an entire night there one time uh, being stuck inside the San Francisco <sighs> airport. So yeah, I've been there. Me in the San Francisco <laughs> airport. I grabbed that off Liam's board. Going back to bag milk with your pick of your airport. Yeah, I like this one because of its very short runway. So when you land, <coughs> they slam on the brakes, and it gives you a rush. So shout out to the Burbank Airport. The, air, the runway is so short. Before you land, they give you an announcement that, hey, just so you know, when we land, we are slamming on them brakes. Nice. Tyler, do they? Yeah, and I wasn't paying attention. I had my AirPods in. It startled me. <laughs> what, where I is land that on a carrier. Burbank. Burbank oh, in L.A. L- L.A. I want to land on a wa- like a carrier. Oh, fuck yeah. That'd be rad. Rick? Take off and stop. That'd be great. Your final airport? Probably the airport I've spent the most time in over my life, and that'd be Cancun. Mm. Mm. Okay. Cancun International. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Quintana Roo, I believe. But yeah. Perfect. And they Rick? just and they just did the renovations. With the can uh, the Cancun Airport, Liam, your airport pick. They had a bubble gum too. The board here. <coughs> so you've never oh, been to go. this one. <laughs> I have three options. <laughs> I don't like any of them. <laughs> but I'm going to just go with the Manchester airport. Because I was actually going to go with the Paris airport. But then I remember... Then you the would have to express some love for Paris. I know. And then I remembered the horrible interaction I had with an Uber driver there. So Which I will not be... Of course, the airport's <laughs> fault. <laughs> not well, I was at the airport. And it was tough to find where to go for the mobile pickup. So, yeah, I guess I'll go Manchester, even though that place is a dump as well. So... Uh, no good we're options for me, to be honest. Not really My other it. one was Iceland, where I had to eat an egg and tuna sandwich, which is gross. I had to. I had to. <laughs> I had yeah. to. They, they like forced, forced him to. I had no security. option. I was a hungry young boy. Did you just take two sandwiches and put them together? <laughs> no, it was advertised as a tuna mayonnaise sandwich. I bit into the thing. Egg. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Your food adventures are always my favorite. Like I'll never forget in my life. You ordering a Caesar salad and it had a little sardine in her. Now that was a shock. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you know how they make the Col- sauce, it makes sense. Shock. But normally they don't stick well, a full fish in it. Is there fish in the sauce? Yeah, there's like sardine paste or whatever. Really? Isn't there Did not anchovy, know that. Paste. Oh, anchovy paste. Anchovy paste. Anchovy that. paste. Well, anchovy it was delicious. Paste. But yeah, I wasn't expecting a little friend in my salad. Well, <laughs> Liam, you built up all the anticipation for Tyler's final pick of the draft. An airport, Tyler. It's probably you get to draft. St. Albert Airport. <laughs> The Villeneuve Airport. Uh, I'm going to take the, whatever the airport's called, Montreal. Uh, Dorval. Pierre, <laughs> Pierre Turgeon, okay. Trudeau, whatever Pierre it is. Pierre Turgeon. <laughs> Pierre uh, Turgeon. Half of it's in French, so it's a curve. Mo- it's all in French. Roule. So it's a curveball. So I like that. I like a little bit. The Pierre adventure. Elliott Trudeau International Airport in what Montreal. I oh. It'll be Pierre Turgeon. It's on the, the Pierre Turgeon. Yeah, though, it's yeah. way better. It's the Pierre Turgeon. And there ends another one of our amazing Dan 3v3 games. Well, there you go. Um, I I have point. the list. You didn't tell me that it was airports we went to, so I googled unique airport names. Oh, oh I was ready. Oh. There's a Batman airport. 
Where? Where? Where at Gotham? You think so? Uh, no, it's in Turkey. Oh, that's or Moron Airport <coughs> in Spain. That's where I live. So cheap. <laughs> Fuku. Fuku Airport in Japan. We got in trouble with names on our last bit, Rick. We can't do names anymore. PP Island. Why? What happened? PP Island. <laughs> PP I Island. mean, like, I don't know that that is actually an airport. So I mean, I, li- I spent list. a year there. In the airport? On the island. The movie Airport was about him. Car Car Airport. Yep. Flin Flon. He was played by Tom Hanks. I want to run Puka. through, gentlemen. Tom I've Hanks got Hanks. some betting talk for our friends <sighs> at Bet99 that I'd like to discuss with you, if you don't mind. Bet99, of course, is the number one online gaming experience in Canada, built by Canadians for Canadians. You elevate your experience with our friends there. Experience the Bet99 same game parlays, player props, flash bet markets, fast payouts, and smooth transactions. Top tier customer service. 19 plus player responsibility. Not available to people in Ontario. Couple of interesting little <coughs> future bets I want to throw at you guys. They have changed. The times they are a changing at our friends at Bet99. The last time we looked at cup favorites, our beloved Edmonton Oilers were first. Mm. Lehman, do you know that they have now dropped? To fourth. Although ty- second, there's three teams tied for first. So they're second. That's but probably fair. How I do you feel about this, Lehman? I think they were rated a little highly on that list. The Hurricanes, Avalanche, and Panthers are all the listed favorites currently. A plus 700. Hmm. Where our beloved Edmonton Oilers are second next up at plus 725. So they're still right up there. Thoughts on the Hurricanes, Avalanche, and Panthers leapfrogging into the favorites' position? I, I think it logically makes sense. Like, sometimes you'll get these, and it's like three Metropolitan teams of the top three, and it's like, well, that's silly. Yep. But now you have the probably the four best teams in each division at the top there. Right? Yeah. The Hurricanes went and made a bunch of transactions at the deadline, and they became, I think, like, socially and, like, to the rest of the league, one of the favorites all of a sudden. Yeah. They got their game breakers. Yeah. And then uh, Colorado has rattled <coughs> off, what, 10 wins in a row? They're 9 and so 1. Yeah, there you go. 9 and 1. Uh, they brought in they brought in a couple of pieces just to kind of solidify things. I think it was somebody that was saying Carrier has now not lost a game in like uh, 20. Yeah, uh, Trennan. Trennan, that's the one. Because he was 8-0 and oh with Nashville, and then, yeah, just went 9-1 and oh and one or So I think people are just kind of taking notice again of the Colorado Avalanche, and, and that's the betters understanding that. So it just makes sense. It's a leveling out of the, the public coming around on these guys. The more interesting futures question for you, gentlemen. Edmonton Oilers. Over one uh, one hundred five point five points. What are they at? Eighty eight, right? They are at eighty nine with thirteen games to go. So there's twenty six points available. They need, you know, they need. They got some work to do. One hundred five point five. The over is set at minus one thirty five. The under is plus one ten. Tyler. There's a part of me that thinks that last game against Colorado, they might be sitting some names. So would Colorado, though. Not, not if not. Nathan McKinnon's chasing his point <coughs> record. What's his point record? He's yeah, but what's his point record? He gets his point, then he does the old Phil Kessel. He comes out, and yeah. He's looking to become the second player to ever get a point in every home game in a season. Wayne Gretzky. Gotcha. Yeah, him and Wayne. Um, so the Oilers would need, again, 18 points to get there in 13 games. 26 points available, they need 18. So you got to go like nine and four. Take the under. Or 16, they need. I'll take the under. Rick, thoughts? Life's too short to bet the I under. I don't love it. I don't love saying oh. that. But again, like, they got some tough games on the s- schedule, some spots where Pickard's going to be getting some Passing games. up the Columbuses, the, yeah. the Senators, the Buffaloes, that hurts too. Yeah, if I was to bet on it, yeah, then I, I want would your take, money. Then I'd take the under just because it's the that's where the odds are. All right. Nation Dan, thoughts? Yeah, it's the under for now. Um, but for the record, I'm not betting on it, so I'm not saying they're going to end up under. But you, you guys said it. It's just the, it's the missing the points against the Ottawa's, even Toronto. Liam, I mean, final say over a one hundred five point five. You taking the over or the under? Under. Life's too short to take the under. You take the over. Plus money. It is plus money. Plus money. But I believe. I believe in our boys. You guys will all be losing your bets while I'll be cashing in slightly less than what you would have made. <laughs> Before we... Do we have any more bet 99 talk? No, I, sir. I have one. 
Oh, go ahead. I want to do a Let's fun thing here on Bet99. Please answer his account. Let's do it. I know. I was just looking. <laughs> no, because they gave me a $25 bonus. Oh, very nice. So I got a $25 bonus, there and go, I'm going to spend it on whatever we collectively decide as a group. Okay. Because I think the President's Trophy race is fascinating right now. Right. You have New York and Vancouver at 98 points apiece, and then you have Florida, Colorado, Carolina, Dallas, and Boston all just one point back, and they all have 71 or 72 games played. So it's a fascinating spot for, you know, basically all of these teams could realistically win it because there's such little time left. Mm -hmm. I have a $25 bonus. I'm going to put it on whatever team we decide on now, and I will buy beers of a varying degree if the bet wins for us for a pod. Mm -hmm. By varying degree, does that mean how many or type brands? Because if we're talking about many, (laughs) then I'm definitely involved in brands. Eh, Here's a sip of this kind. Here's a sip of that kind. Seven each. Let's go. I'll just buy beers for a podcast. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Varying degree, the they might right. be really nice. Read the odds for the teams. Okay, so the Rangers come in at plus 240. Then you mm-hmm. have the Panthers at plus 350. And then just in order to speed it up, Colorado, Carolina, then Vancouver. Dallas is plus 950. The Bruins are 17 to 1. I'm going Bruins. I'm putting my money on. Uh, so for the Bruins to do it, they're going to be very they, – they're will, they will not win a tiebreaker. Ooh, that's an interesting angle to Thank look you. at here. Because the, the tiebreaker is uh, the first tiebreaker in the NHL. Wins. Regulation wins, regulation. right? Regulation. It's the greatest number of games won, excluding games won in OT or shootout. So it's actually yeah, regulation win. Yes. 32, yeah. They wouldn't win a tiebreaker. No. they're. What they're was um, Carolina? Carolina in that mix was plus 640. That's lame. Canes and Bruins do play each other twice. Bruins have a tough schedule. Holy I'd probably take the Avs. Yeah, I'm looking at the Bruins schedule. I take that back. Uh, Carolina. Carolina have the Penguins, the Red Wings, the Canadians, the Bruins, the Capitals, Blue Jackets twice, Chicago, Boston, and St. Louis. So I'm on the Hurricanes. I'm with Lehman. <sighs> I can't say no to the team, but man, I don't know if you guys remember 2006. I hate doing anything. I actually blocked out. I want. Yeah. I want to spend Tyler's money. That's what I'm. That's fair. That's what too. I want. I'm I want to drink Dallas his money. Stars. We have to decide on one. You got the vote. Oh, it's all I'm the sorry. Vote. I'm just going. Well, oh, the vote is, is still in favor of the Canes. We're, so a, we're a democracy in Canada. All right, okay, so the k- if the Canes win the President's Trophy, beer's on the first podcast. One on beer there. each. Well, hold, on second, here, hold on a second here. Hold on a second here. Just for how much would you win? 185. Okay, From the full 25. I could buy some nice beers. I could buy I'm not going to spend the whole thing on beers. Why not? Oh, here we are. Oh, now, now, now the rules have the been adjusted. You guys wanted me to spend those. T- yes. Why? We would have picked the Bruins. You would have wanted me to spend like $500 on beers. Why yes. Not? Yeah, that's what you said. I want us you to said be a like. variety of beers. Everybody's got to get a ride home. That's what <laughs> I want. We can maybe do that. <laughs> um, can I drop some knowledge on everybody? Oh, please, please. Quickly. So here's some guys around when Zach Hyman was. Um, signed who have similar deals. Philip Deneau, Jaden Schwartz have both 5.5. Okay. I do like Philip Deneau. I like both those guys. Do you, have the, do you have the total income on their parents? <laughs> yeah, how much money does Deneau's parents make? Uh, uh, it just says not as much as Mr. and Mrs. Hyman, actually. Ah, uh, Michael Granlund, Mikhail Granlund, 5 million. Blake Coleman, notify, notif, what's the saying? Lambs. It was Kicks, not a goal. Bucks, whatever. It was no, not a goal. He's a kicker. Brandon Saad, 4.5. Wenberg, 4.5. Michael Hoffman, also 4.5. Last one I'll give you. Thomas Tatar, 4.5. So safe who to say, him? who signed him? Who signed that one? Uh, the Devils. To Tatar? Tatar. Oh, okay. Thank God. I thought it was Ken There's Hoffman. only one. The there's two other players who got paid more than Hyman. It actually wasn't like that much of like an expensive uh, free agent class. Grubau got 5.9. Dougie Hamilton, $9 million was the highest. Dino's right pre- now, if you had a UFA out there and you didn't position didn't matter, dollars didn't matter, are you going after Jaime or are you going after Dougie Hamilton first? Knowing what I know right now? No, just right now as players. Don't right now, they're both available. You can get you can sign one to like a free contract. I, I will say this, and I don't mean it to be disrespectful. I think it's harder to find Dougie Hamilton than Zach Hyman. Zach, yeah, Dougie Hamilton's a really good... Guy yeah, healthy. I would have Dougie Hamilton over Hyman. Yeah, only 96 four. players have ever scored 150 no, goals. No, I in know, the I know. And, and that's Dougie why... Dougie Hamilton say he's in the top 96 of doing anything? Yeah, but he was just pretty lucky. <laughs> Dougie Hamilton just well, likes going to museums. Mm. Mm. Yep. 
Yeah, that's yep. the point. The Royal Alberta Museum can only be so entertaining for so many times for Dougie Hamilton, especially he's there three, four times a day. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to get our boy Waz, and we're going to teach him a few things about life. For our friends at the Snow Valley Aerial Park and Rainbow Valley Campground, it's time for Waz's signature segment. It's not a bit nor a game. Can you clear that up for me? Starting on April, uh, May 31st, family fun for all summer long. Attractions include the Aerial Tower, the White Mud Creek a Mining Company, Target Golf, and the all-new Mini Golf. That is the Snow Valley Aerial Park. It is a great time. It is going to be wonderful. And the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra will return in August. Check the ESO website for some tickets. They're going to be doing events there all summer long. And for the Rainbow Valley Campground, they open on May 15th. This summer, take advantage of over 60 sites and three comfort camping domes right here in Edmonton. Visit Rainbow valleycom to book your spot. It is the only campground in the city. Get yourself booked in. Maybe do a whole weekend. Liam and I looked at those comfort camping domes. Pretty sick. Those are sick. They are mm-hmm. sick. They're like fully furnished and everything. Should we have Maybe like we should do a podcast in there. Oh, yeah. in the pod. We were just talking about. And that. then we go smack yeah. some balls. Uh-huh. Mm. Then we climb and we get scared a little. Waz has to come and film us though, because that is his home. Actually, I have one question. We gotta place. give you a microphone, Waz. Okay. <laughs> my, my my one question about this is like can you actually clear this up for me as what what's the the coal mining thing the white mud coal at white mud creek coal mining yeah, yeah we send you into a mine and you mine for coal yeah exactly. you come back fairly straightforward <laughs> actually yep very That's good it. I like that <coughs> all right uh, first one uh, I found this one on mm-hmm. Twitter so I thought why not throw it in here uh, clear this up for me the Oilers need to play a heavier game to win the Stanley Cup is that true or false uh, I would say it's actually probably fairly true in many aspects. I think they got the, the players that can do yes. it. I think that they've got the players that can do it. They did not do it the last couple of games, so I can see why people are thinking about it. The Oilers weren't very physical in Ontario. Uh-huh. Probably should change, even though they have the players that can play that way. I don't think they're a soft team by any means, and I don't think this has been a trend for the season, but for the playoffs, yes, they have to play Ken Holland has put together a team it's a that's strong suitable team. To, yep. to win the Stanley Cup, and yes, if they play to their best, they won't get pushed around by anybody. I, I would say I'm more worried about their ability, especially in the bottom six, to play faster than I am their ability to play bigger and tougher. So, I just would like to see them all come together and push people around some more laws. So I do think that the team overall has to just show a little bit more teeth. This one's kind of almost a little bit the same, but I was thinking about it. So now as we do get closer to the playoffs, what is the recipe for success in this year's playoffs from the Oilers? Good cold tending is one, but what else Don't is that? Scoring more goals than God the other team. Oh, that's a good one. You rascal. <laughs> Dominant special teams. For the Oilers, especially right now because it's front of mind, play full 60. Here's the thing. Thinking back to Saturday in Toronto. If they played the entire game like they did for the final 20 minutes, we're not talking about a 6-3 loss. It takes more than a period to win hockey games. People play mm. a full 60. I would, I would just tack on to that, too. Don't let yourself get caught up in the emotion. And we saw it last year when Petrolangelo did his shit to dry sidle. It just seems like this team kind of gets lost in that unbridled emotion sometimes. Last one up here is, uh, clear this up for me. How important is it for the Oilers to get wins over Dallas, Vancouver, and Colorado in the last few games here? Against top team, uh, against top 10 opponents this season, the Oilers have a 6-11-3 record. Is that concerning? I Listen, I think those wins are important because you want home ice. I don't think winning those games gives you, outside of maybe some internal confidence, any better of a chance of like beating them in the playoffs. I think you want to win the games because to be the best, you got to beat the best. And there are going to be teams that you probably have to beat on road to the Stanley Cup. So I want wins over everybody, not just those teams. doesn't matter who they are. they got 13 games. Let's go 13-0. and Why not? I want to beat them. And, uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Once you get to the playoffs, it's a different time. <coughs> You're playing one team, seven games. doesn't really matter. you got to win those games. 6-11-3, and three, you said. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, a lot of these losses that came early in the season, like Vancouver, I think two, th- two to three of the losses came in October. Three. three. three yeah, there you go. Time. And even Dallas, I think I remember, was in November. So well, I'm just looking. Since Christmas, they've beat L.A., Toronto, was Boston. LA, is LA a top ten team right now? I guess I'm kind and of Vegas playoff teams. Well, right? They've beat Vegas. They beat Nashville. 
Uh, like, yeah, it, they have to be those teams because they need to lock up second place. Yeah, but then I guess you compare it to the West teams and stuff, right? It's just there's a, that, there's that narrative where the Oilers have beaten the bad teams a lot of the time this year, but the good teams. Oh. Then again, we haven't played like it's very been inconsistent. I find. Don't let the narrative get to you, buddy. Yeah, don't listen to mainstream media. Yeah, do your own. Don't research. let the man get you down, Waz. <laughs> they don't talk enough about people's upbringing. Mm-hmm. This is true. This is true. With that being said, thank you for clearing that up for me. Why? What is with our staff sitting in the dark? All I don't the time? get it. I'm I come in, I turn the light on, and people guy. get upset with me. I'm a big this dark is a guy. Place of work, not a cocoon. I, <laughs> I sit there staring at a screen with a. There's a lot of work on done it. inside of a cocoon. I'm not a vampire, although I'd like to be. We're gonna wrap up this podcast with a very uh, thrilling debate about which movie Brad Pitt was the most handsome in. Tyler, go ahead. Troy. Moneyball. Oh, Troy. Yes, yeah, Troy. Troy. The answer is Troy. No, the the. Uh, Handsome? When he's the vampire. Oh, interview with the vampire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's immortal, French, and sexy. Yeah, yeah. And he's Do you know young, what? He's got the long blonde hair. Underrated in World War Z. <laughs> it was a good movie, too. Yeah. Was he yeah. handsome? Oh, yeah. Ruggedly long, handsome. Long when is he? World War Z. I think <laughs> brains are the most handsome part of someone. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big Billy Bean guy. Listen, I don't know what he did in those other movies, but turning the Oakland A's yeah. into a playoff contender is way more impressive. That's fair. He saved hot. the world in World War Z. Noted playoff contender. I, I stand champion. by what I said. <laughs> <laughs> not champions, just contenders. Finally, let's wrap up the podcast for real. We got a game tonight yeah. against the Winnipeg Yets. Nation Dan, your score prediction. Well, I will note that I was the only person that predicted we would lose to the Leafs. So it's your fault? It's yeah. your fault. Blame me. Blame but Dan. I'm going to say we beat the airportless ones four to three. One. Lehman. I think it'll be three one with an empty net. And just for the record, I did go back and listen to the podcast empty net? on Friday. I did not get engaged. Congratulations. How many people congratulated you? A ton. <laughs> I mean, how I felt for years. It's annoying. <laughs> I was just very confused. And then my girlfriend was like, well. It was good, good of you to take what, a maintenance day. What are we going to do about this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Congrats, Lehman. <laughs> Thank Big you day in your so life. much. Lehman left her there. For nothing. Tyler, score prediction against the Jets. 4-3 in ogre time. For whomst? The Oilers. Rick? Who's goaltending for them? Hello, Hello Buck. Buck. Or 5-2 Edmonton. 4-2 <laughs> win. Coming at you. Lock it in. Spray a couple of shekels <laughs> on it over at Bet99. Provided that you're 19 plus. Can do so responsibly and you don't live in Ontario. Got it? Good. That's the Tuesday episode of O&R. Talk to you on Friday. Have a great week, everybody.